Here are seven compelling reasons to get coaching instead of therapy. You know you want help. This might give you another alternative that would work really well for you. I'm Dr. Paul Jenkins. I'm a professional psychologist and I have the privilege of having done both. For the first half of my career, I did clinical psychotherapy. I was seeing patients every day, all day, giving them a diagnosis, working them through a treatment plan, billing the insurance company. That's therapy. And then for the last half of my career, I have been doing coaching based on a positive psychology model. Let me give you a quick overview of how I look at that. When you consider your mental health, your emotions, your relationships, everything that makes up your psychology on a spectrum or a continuum, clear over on the left end is the sick end. That's where we have diagnosis, pathology, treatment. I'm really more interested nowadays in the other end of that spectrum. And to understand that, if we go to the middle first, that's health meaning not sick. Think about it. You could be sick in bed with a fever throwing up. There comes a time when you can get out of bed and you're not sick. But that doesn't mean you're truly fit, thriving, prospering. That's over here on the other end of the spectrum. Therapy is basically on this end of the spectrum. Coaching is basically on this end of the spectrum. And there's some overlap in the middle because everybody's got issues. Have you noticed? And we deal with those in both therapy and coaching, but the goals tend to be different. Let's go over those seven reasons that I promised you so that this all makes sense. Now, a quick disclaimer, I am not saying you should not do therapy. In fact, if that is the best fit for you, please do that. I am saying that there might be some other alternatives you hadn't considered yet. One of the reasons I think that coaching is a good option is because it is growth and performance focused instead of pathology focused. Unfortunately, psychotherapy sounds a little like therapy for psychos to some people. And that's unfortunate because it makes it inaccessible to folks who don't want to be categorized on that end of the spectrum. But there's all these people in the middle who are missing out on things that could help them to move forward in their lives. Growth and performance focus is over here on the coaching end where there's no assumption of pathology. But we take people from where they are with the goal of trying to upgrade or move them forward in their goals toward that healthy end of the spectrum. The second compelling reason that I think we should consider coaching in our lives is that it is solution focused rather than problem focused. During all those years when I was doing traditional psychotherapy, there was a diagnostic phase and the primary question there is, what's the problem? that we're dealing with. In my coaching practice, we spend very little time talking about the problems and instead try to focus on the solutions that are going to move us forward or the goals that we have. So it's just a shift in the mentality, again, from that problem focused over to more of a solution focus. The third reason that occurs to me is that coaching tends to be principle-based, whereas therapy tends to be treatment-based. Remember, in therapy, we're identifying a diagnosis, a problem that needs to be addressed. And there's kind of a prescriptive approach there to, okay, here's the treatment that goes along with that particular problem. Whereas in the coaching approach, it's more of a principle-based approach. Now, when I say principle, I mean natural laws, like gravity. You never get up in the morning and think, huh, I wonder if gravity's on. It tends to be on, right? And it affects you all day, every day. Understanding that principle is really important so that you can make good decisions in your own life based on your understanding of those principles. It's not magic. It's not luck. When people succeed in life, in business, in relationships, there are principles that determine all of life's outcomes. And one thing I've really enjoyed about the coaching approach 
is that it focuses on what those principles are and how I can apply those principles in my life or how my clients can apply those principles in theirs. I got four more reasons for you, but before I get to those, what you're doing right now is considered a form of coaching. You're watching this video. Would you just take a moment to hit the subscribe button right here so that you have access to ongoing coaching in the form of the videos that we're putting out every week here at Live On Purpose TV. And that leads me into my fourth reason. I just invited you to subscribe to the channel. Notice that you're watching this video because you decided to watch this video. It's not that Dr. Paul prescribed it and told you you need to watch this video. You went and did a little search on what it is you're looking for, a question that you have, this showed up in your subscription list, or for whatever reason, you became aware of this video. And then you made a decision to engage in this video. That's one of the reasons that I think coaching is so effective. It tends to be client-driven rather than therapist-driven. In the years that I did clinical psychotherapy, I came up with a treatment plan. I came up with the treatment goals and I would consult with my clients about that, but it was very much therapist driven. Whereas in my coaching practice, it's driven by what my client wants to accomplish. What are my client's goals? And that tends to be a difference between coaching and therapy. Another reason coaching can be so effective is because it tends to be collaborative, whereas therapy is much more of a solo endeavor. Therapy is driven by rules of privacy and confidentiality. And a lot of people don't want to publish the fact that they're seeing a therapist for some condition that they're receiving treatment for. It all makes sense and it's governed by the laws of HIPAA and privacy. Coaching tends to be more collaborative. In fact, most of the coaching groups I personally have signed up for are group experiences. I get to listen in as coaches and other clients are sharing information freely and talking about the principles rather than the problems. I have experienced in my own practice the power of that collaboration as I provide a service on my membership site called Ask Dr. Paul. My clients can show up and ask me anything. Everyone else who shows up in that meeting is listening in. They can raise their hand as well. But it's so fascinating to me that your brain will grab whatever is relevant to you even if you're not on the hot seat. If you're listening in from the wings, your brain will still tell you what's important for you. It's a powerful way to gain additional benefit that's really not present in that therapy world. Coaching tends to be educational rather than therapeutic. Now, I'm not saying that therapy could never be educational and I'm not saying that coaching could never be therapeutic, but there's a little different focus there. And I'm finding in the coaching world that it's about identifying and incorporating those principles we talked about earlier and becoming very aware of what those principles are and how they affect us in our individual functioning. When I say therapeutic, I'm talking about more of the emotional attachment to different ideas or stories that are going on in our minds. In fact, the stereotypical image of therapy is lying down on a couch and sharing your deepest, innermost thoughts and feelings with someone who is sitting there empathically listening, maybe jotting down some notes and giving you occasional feedback. While you can gain very powerful insights about yourself in coaching, it's really more focused on identifying and policing your own thinking. And it's our thoughts that cause our feelings. That's what I mean by educational more than therapeutic. Another reason occurred to me is I realized how much I have personally spent on coaching in the last several years. The difference between coaching and therapy in my mind is the same as the difference between an investment 
and an expense. And I'm not saying that an expense is a bad thing. In fact, I pay expenses on my home on a regular basis so that I can maintain my home. The expense that we pay for therapy is to keep our brain or our mind and our heart and our soul in a position where we can continue to function. And it's a great expense to incur if that's something that you need. I look at coaching as more of an investment because there's no presumption of pathology to start with. We're in a pretty good place already, but we're investing in getting to that next level or taking our game up a notch or two. When I hired my last coach, about a year ago, I started working with a particular coach I was doing pretty well, but I could tell and I knew that this coach could take me to a higher level and I wanted to play at that level. And that's why I made the investment. And it has paid off very nicely for me as she was able to take me to that next level. Investment versus expense. Now, as I've shared these seven compelling reasons, they're compelling to me, why we should consider coaching as a viable alternative to therapy. Coming from someone who has done both as a professional, I think that this opens up the possibilities for people who did not have access to the kinds of upgrades that are available to them immediately. I've got a free gift for you just for watching and sticking with me to this point. If this interests you and you would like to explore the possibility of personal coaching for yourself, go to the URL on the screen right now, drpauljenkins.com slash coaching. Zip on over there. What you'll do is fill out a little form that helps you to explore where you are in this journey. And then a member of my team will reach out to you for a free consultation about whether coaching is right for you. You're welcome.